Welcome to the Plant Spirit Podcast on connecting with plant consciousness and the healing wisdom of nature. I'm your host, Sarah Artemisia, and I'm absolutely delighted to invite our next guest to the show today, Vita Hoffweber. Vita is a spiritual life coach who supports creative, earth-loving people to pass through the gates of life's initiations and liberation through self-expression. She has a master's degree in counseling psychology from Pacifica Graduate Institute, and she's practiced herbalism for the last 15 years. So Vita, thank you so much for joining us today. Mm, So, so grateful to be here. Yeah, I am just so excited to dive into our interview right now about the role of plant spirits in the great turning. This is like juicy. I'm like, here we are. (laughs) We're right in it. So... Yeah, I'm curious to hear, um, you know, the, the messages from the plants have just felt so potent over this past past year, past while of time that we've been in recently. And and I'm curious, what are some of the recent messages that the plant spirits have shared with you? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, um, the redwoods, um, I live really close to them. And so they have been speaking to me quite a lot recently. And um, I was actually really surprised the last message that came through. I was standing with them and they said, literally feel how tall you are. Like literally feel yourself lengthen and grow, you know, and to just like the trees, you know, like really remember your grandness. Because in these times, it's a time of collapse. It's a time of revolution. It's a time of decay. Um, there's a lot of grief happening. And I, I was so surprised at a very like uh, fundamental message to literally like feel the length of your body, you know, rising like the trees. And they also shared with me like on this like very visceral level that we need to go to the forest. We need to cultivate these relationships because we need to remember that like we are part of the ecosystem, but from like a cellular level, like that we are not other, like that they are our family, that we are their family. And that like, we, we're not existing outside of an ecology you know, to be, we're not witnessing in ecology. We are experiencing a relational web of like, in which we are all living in. And we need to go and be with them to literally remember like who we are and that we belong. And, and that there are these beautiful, receptive, beings there to help us and to remember, like help us remember who we are essentially in the great place of things. So that was the latest message that I got. So powerful. I just, I feel that every time, and particularly with the Redwoods too, I, I get this sense um, both that they are, um, antennas of light receiving information and these incredibly grounding pillars of light and that they're meditating all the time. I feel that every time I'm in the Redwood Forest and I feel like they hold such a, um, uh, like a mirror of wholeness for us that it's like, we don't even have to intellectually understand it when we're in, particularly in the Redwood Forest. They, they there's something so magical about the redwoods. I feel like, like you said, it, it's like a mirror on the cellular level. It's a mirror of like, this is how to be in a state of aligned wholeness. They just reflect that back to us. And I, I love that you're so connected to that. And God, what a beautiful message they shared with you. It's absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I also kind of feel like, you know, find also your plant allies, like maybe maybe you learn from wildflowers, you know, or maybe you learn from moss, um, or the ferns, or I don't know, small flowers. And just like being like that there, there's a frequency that we carry that 
um, that the plants also carry. And I think, you know, recently a lot of books have come out on like how trees need each other to, to learn how to be trees, right? And to create like harmony within these wider systems that they live. But I think we too need the plants and the plants can teach us. And a lot of these ancestral ways of knowing are still there. They're still available for us there in the plant realms. And if we go to them in these open-hearted ways, they can help us shift our perception and shift our consciousness. And, you know, our natural state is, is much more like open. And no matter, I was just reflecting actually right before this, I went to the forest and, you know, it literally doesn't matter what state you are in. Like the, the plant realm will always receive you and help you remember your essence, your openness, your, your worth beyond what human language and human society can, can give us. You know, this deep, spacious, heartfelt essence, vibration, if we turn towards that. And it is so healing. That's amazing. I totally agree. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Yeah. And I mean, you know, like you mentioned at the beginning, like the it's so interesting to me as there's multiple types of mirrors that are, are reflecting back to us in the external reality. And, you know, one of those mirrors is the wholeness of nature. If, if we can open up to it, another one of those mirrors is like you mentioned at the beginning, you know, the collapse and destruction of society. And so because we are in these portal times right now, we're in such a pivotal time on this planet. I'm curious, you know, as we are, fi- as we're finding ourselves really in this stage of, you know, what I would even call the late gasps of late capitalism, what role do you see plant spirit medicine playing in the great turning towards earth healing? You know, I had, I have been thinking about that for a while, but I'm going to tune in with myself. I feel like there might be something else that wants to come forward from within me. Um, I mean, I think it's so funny what just came to me. It's just like, to help us open our hearts. Antoine Saint Exupery, with the heart, we can see clearly, we can see truly, you know? And I, I, I think when we start to see clearly, we start to move more clearly. And isn't it the journey of life to like move from here to hear. And, and I think that like right now in, in this, I mean, essentially like from a more analytical, I mean, I get very mental. I'm an Aquarius. I'm a double Aquarius. I love, I literally studied analytical psychology. (laughs) So I love the mental realms. Um, and from and from and, and those are really interesting though too, you know, because from that from that sort of uh, philosophical perspective, I see the plant realms as helping us undo the the veil that we have been living in. We have been living in a very dualistic perspective, and that is a very 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 painful way to live extremely painful when we are separated from ourselves and who we think we are is is not these little bubbles you know like we are all children of the earth and we need to be embedded in that to remember that and when we i mean it, it's really a fun thing and interesting thing like even just herbalism beyond just the fundamentals of herbalism, even, 
before you might get to plant spirit medicine or who knows, maybe it just is a mixed doorway. But oftentimes we ask like, what is this herb good for? And there's, we, I, I'm just going to go there. <laughs> Do please <laughs> all about it. <laughs> that a Christian ethos of manifest destiny is so embedded, is so embedded that there is an attitude of mine. There is an attitude, a colonialized attitude that persists and pervades, and it's not our fault. It's not our fault, but it is our responsibility to notice those vibrations and to help free the, the, the world, you know, help free. I don't have children, but I have a niece and I love her so very much, you know, and I want this world to continue to expand and become a more beautiful place, like for, for all future generations. And I see the realm of plant spirit medicine helping reanimate our conscious, re-indigenize our consciousness to be not um, subject object oriented, but I thou, you know, like to move into that sense of like sacred otherness, like deep relationality. And how did we get ourselves here? How do we create a more sustainable, you know, survivable, thriving earth. Like we can't do that from this place of domination. And we do need a quickening. And I see plant like turning towards like our plant ally friends who are so there for us, who are so receptive or who are so willing and ready to greet us and meet us and turn our perception and turn our consciousness, just which is the element of magic itself, you know? And so what better than to turn to our plant spirit allies to help us remember these essential truths, to take our blinders away, to help us heal the pain of dualistic isolation and perception that have, has driven the capitalistic machine forever, you know? And, and if we are deeply connected to that, we don't need to dominate. We don't need to, um, we don't need to, we, we don't need to destroy in order to connect because ultimately that's what we're all trying to do. We're trying to feel happy, safe, and connected. You know, we, we all want to belong and what capitalist society requires for us to belong is staggering and it is damaging and it is unsustainable. So if we can, in a pleasurable way, turn our consciousness, you know, towards that which will sustain not only us, but the whole, like, uh, it, it will sustain us. It will sustain us as earth. Yeah, that's so key. That's so, so key. And and the key to that, like you mentioned, is that aspect of the deep relationship, the deep, genuine relationship. And so I'm curious, you know, from your perspective, what are some key steps that folks who are really interested in developing a deeper relationship with plant allies, like with the magic of nature, yeah. with that supportive, loving embrace, like what are some key steps um, that you would recommend to really connect in with the, the spiritual aspect of plant allies? Yes. Um, once again, I, I kind of had thought about this, but I'm going to close my eyes in and um, check in. Evidently, the heart just wants to come. Yes. Today. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's like, uh, I think a wholeheartedness. You know, like really getting clear about your intentions. Like, what is the energy first and foremost? Like, what are you trying to do here? You know, and can you perceive that? You know, um, I love 
I love in like some mythologies, like Hawthorne and the heart are so connected. And the heart in magic is is the realm where all all realms meet. It's the hearth, right? And so if we get clear with our heart intention, I think that's really important. And that also helps prepare the way for um, those connections to happen, to bloom, you know? Um, But on a really practical way, I think getting in tune with your own body, you know, like getting clear about can so oftentimes people take medicine like herbal medicine and say, oh, I don't feel it. And to me, I feel like it requires sometimes a developed sensitivity to your own, to your own frequency. You know, can you, can you, do you know what the vicissitudes of your inner experience, you know? And so if you can like deeply um, pray at your own body altar, you know, and, and become clear about what is happening and you don't have to change it. Just like, no, just know the inner geography, just know the inner territory of your own inner being then you're way clearer when you go and connect with plant energy and you can feel the way your imagination, the way your consciousness, the way your vibrational field changes and be receptive because some people may come into this world, like really knowing their psychic gifts. I didn't. And, um, and so it's like almost like be ready for like sensations in your body, you know, be ready for images in your mind, be ready for little voices that like may just sound like a little whisper in the background, you know? And so like when we are clear, we can then be receptive and we can, um, we can truly accept the messages that are being brought to us because so like, I think it's in our like ancestral DNA that we've been trained. I mean, let's just say the word witch, you know, this is the, this is like the, the sacred healer of the village material we're talking about. And for generations, that role has been, violated, you know? And so I think that there's fear and there is also apprehension around the ways sometimes that the plants do speak to us and to opening up to that, that those messages. And so I think um, really learning to trust yourself and, and reclaim like your knowing um, so knowing your body and reclaiming your knowing, you know, and getting really clear about your, your heart intention are, are three extremely fundamental steps um, to developing relationships with our, our beloved plant community. Beautiful. And, and so, so essential, you know, I love that you brought up that aspect of the somatic felt sense as well, because um, I've found a lot of times that's, that is how plants will communicate very often is through this somatic felt sense. And if we're aware of, okay, what is the primary foundational baseline of the somatic felt sense of the self period, then we can open up the, the awareness to uh, the awareness is much more accessible to um, being receptive to different imprints of, you know, plant personalities, the healing gifts that they offer through that somatic felt sense. So I love that you brought that up as well as the, the, um, that heart connection piece as well. So, so important. And, um, you know, another piece of, of this whole picture that I feel like is so important in the, in the relationship with plant spirits, with plant medicine, and with this, this portal time of the great turning that we're in is, is really, and I'm curious to hear your perspective on this. Like, how do we cultivate an intersectional approach to the realm of plant spirit medicine? And, um, and also for folks who maybe aren't familiar with what, with intersectional approach, like, what does that mean? 
Yes. Um, Oh, big question. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's, it's, it's a biggie. And it's like, it's essential. It's foundational. Yeah. Like we're doing this together. So how do we do mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so, I mean, intersectional comes from like the realm of like feminism, you know, to be, to be aware of one's like social location and being clear on like what power and what privileges you hold based upon like the multiple identities that you have. And so I see intersectionality as a like a fabulous lens to say like, oh, like where am I not seeing things? You know, like um, if we don't take an intersectional approach, like we miss people, we miss um, communities, we miss um We miss building the like holistic community that we want to, you know, and, um, and so I find, I love finding things that like act like a flashlight, you know, like where, like where, where can't I see, you know, and so intersectionality to me is like a way of illuminating and double checking my work, you know, and so, um, but what does it mean why, like, why care about intersectionality and plant spirit medicine? Maybe they seem disparate, you know? And to me, I see, like, first and foremost, most of us are living on unceded lands, right? So I think, and, and um, I don't even know the whole history, but there's a whole realm of, of Black herbalism that is completely like, like not being talked about and not given credit. And so when we go towards plants, when we go towards plants and we go towards healing, I think it's really important to get clear, like what, where has there been degradation? You know, like it, it's another form of relationality, I think, like with, with a plant community. Um, and so I see is like getting clear first and foremost, like on the, on the land of where you live. Cause I think most of us want to connect with those, those plants, um, you know, being, being aware of like where, like what species maybe it has been traditionally used by the, the original peoples around you, you know, um, like I love uh, OSHA, you know, like us to come poor Terry and, it technically grows kind of sometimes in my neighborhood, but it's rare, you know, and, and that is definitely a plant like the original peoples of, of where I live use. And so that is a plant I'm never going to go wildcraft around where I live because I believe that the grandmother's and grandfathers of like the Klamath area, you know, that's theirs. That's not mine, you know? Um, and fabulously, there are some areas in Colorado where there's, they're growing on a bunch of like dead logs where there was like logging damage, but there's like medicine that's coming back. And so getting clear on like where, yeah, like what's happening in, in, like in the geography, in the landscape, in the ecosystem where all of these plants are coming from, you know, who, who originally had access to who, who isn't being invited into the conversation, you know? And also sometimes like, what is the cost of, of what plant spirit medicine you are taking? Um, You know, I think there's been a lot of conversations around sage and Palo Santo, right? Like recently. And yeah. So I think just like key, like allowing like our perceptions to be open and aware, you know, like how do we create not only an energetic reciprocity, but a concrete reciprocity? You know, I, I've been learning a little bit about watershed policy and watershed advocacy you know, and so we can actually, you know, stand up 
for peoples within our communities, you know? And it may seem so like, what? Like this is plant spirit medicine, but like doing the work to protect like what matters to us, like on a, on a very concrete level, I think is so important. And I think it's really important to look at who has access and who doesn't have, have access and what spaces are, are like, what kind of space are you creating? If you are, you know, sharing plant spirit medicine, um, if you are getting, um, indigenous knowledge and sharing it, you know, like, is that, is that getting reconnected, you know? And, and do those indigenous individuals want that information shared? So I think just like starting to just loosen and ask ourselves these questions about how do we find ourselves in socio, socio location? Whose land are we living on? Um, where does this plant come from? How is this plant historically used? Who has access? Who doesn't have access? What story is being told? What story isn't being told? So we can really move forward in a good way. So powerful. That is. Thank you for giving voice to that. It, it, it's, it's so, so, so essential. And that is one of the very deep seated um, uh, expressions that I felt calling to come forward in this summit what you just articulated. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm like tearing up a little bit, just thinking about it. It's like, so, so important, like honoring the lineage of place of the people who came before of like, who doesn't have access? Like who's not a part of the conversation that absolutely it's everyone's birthright to be a part of the conversation of plant spirit medicine. And like, why are some people being left out of that? Like, that is not right. That's not okay. And so that, um, yeah, thank you, Vita, for 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 naming that, for giving voice to that. It's uh, it's so so important. So thank important. you for giving rise to these conversations. You know, and like I can think of one particular example, like um, on Instagram, there's a collective called Canoe Journey Herbalists, and they are literally fundraising to for land. So. Like this, I mean, like land back, Liter literally, you need land to like cultivate these plants and, and disseminate it into community. And so, you know, for a long time, they've just been asking for donations for, for, from herbalists, you know, um, just to send in, you know, but like how powerful to like, look out and be like, yes, like I can contribute back. I can help these original peoples literally with their land, getting their land back, you know, so that they can practice herbalism and plant medicine in these original ways, you know, and like, gosh, that, that's uh, ugh, like, well, I mean, what better, like, why else are we here? Like, you know, <laughs> like, if not to just like, come forward and participate in these bigger healing, you know, at, at this moment in time. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious to hear a little bit too. And this question might be so big and subjective, like how do you even have an answer for it? But how would you say that plant spirits really support you in your life's work and your life purpose here? Yeah, I mean, I feel like plant spirits are always trying to keep me on track, you know? <laughs> I feel that too. <laughs> um, I mean, my whole life is surrounded by plants. Uh, I have an herbal garden I cultivate. I have, you know, um, all all of these plants in my, my medicine cabinet, like I have a huge medicine cabinet. And I mean, I guess it feels more like a way of life. It just, it just feels like a way of, of, of life. Like it's so infused, you know, 
at this point in time, like, actually, it's funny, this past season of growing plants, I hardly bottled any medicine. Like I, I dried a few things, but it's interesting, the more I walk this like herbalist path, the more the plants say no to me, the more the plants say, no, you actually don't need a ton of stuff. Like you don't need a huge quantity. Actually, can you, can you just sit with us and like receive medicine simply by growing us and just by being with us? I, it's almost like they've gotten more strict a little bit with me you know, like be accountable, like, you know, you can feel this. So, so do it, you know, so, so um, allow yourself to receive, like, you know, I guess just trusting in, in the medicine that can come just by being in relational proximity, like by being almost like in a, in a really deep friendship, by cultivating like, such deep friendships, you know, with these beautiful plant allies, you know, and my Angelica didn't come back this year. And I'm so sad, you know, and, and so just like any relationship, it has like the beautiful, like, yes, of being there, but also has the loss, you know. Um, So yeah, I feel like the more I work with plants, the more they they say, yeah, just drop into the field and 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 just truly be with them. Yeah. I feel that so strongly. I it I think it was maybe last year or something I was doing a um a plant meditation with nettle. Um nettle doesn't grow very uh prolifically around here in the drier part of Southern Oregon, like it does down where you are in Arcata. Mm-hmm. But, um, but we were growing some nettle here and I was doing a meditation with it. And I, f- I heard f- and felt this very clear message coming through about exactly what you're talking about of like the value and importance and like essentialness of connecting with the plants in this more subtle vibrational way, like with the direct plant spirit of literally just sitting with the plant, absorbing it, or of course, flower essences, or maybe even like a drop dose tincture, like three drops or something can also be a way to really drop in and connect in pretty directly with the, with the plant spirit, with the gifts of the plants. But it was this very clear message that I was hearing from the, from the nettle of that, um, this is going to become more and more foundational as a way of connecting with the plants moving forward because of how our planet is currently shifting. And like, you know, species are very endangered or going extinct. And so it's like, how can, how is it possible to connect in with the powerful medicinal gifts and multidimensional gifts of these incredibly powerful beings of healing without literally, um, you know, harvesting them. And, um, of course that may not be possible in all cases, but like when it, it was just, it was just this very clear invitation of when it is possible to connect in on a more subtle vibrational level to really access that depth of relationship and, um, you know, reciprocity, do it. Yeah. So clear, just do it. Yeah. And, and, make offerings too. Yes. Yeah. The reciprocity piece. That's a yeah. part of the reciprocity. Yeah. Yeah. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Like what, what is your process with the offerings? Cause I, I'm just, I'm so excited to hear. I have a really, really funny non-conventional story to share first about making offerings. Um, so my husband started uh, roasting coffee about three and a half, four months ago. And the other morning I went to meditate with my like redwood friends and I made them a really nice latte (laughs) I made them a really nice latte and I took it up and I I poured you know the coffee in the center of the circle and I couldn't believe how much they were they were so delighted they were so delighted they're like no one ever brings us coffee So, you know, like, (laughs) you just never know, like, what, 
like they're gonna enjoy um and so I guess I you know I've had a very I I practiced Tibetan Buddhism also for oh gosh maybe about 15 years as well and so there's so many like formalities and part like you know there's so many particularities about how you like create ritual ritual offerings and and even within like different traditions, like working with like the contomble, like the forest spirits, you know, like there are particular things that they like, like sesame seeds and honey and chocolate. And, um, but I really like to just make like, once again, just follow the heart offerings, like what feels, I'm also somebody who takes a grounded and spiritual approach. Like, I always think, okay, yes, I'm making an essence offering. I'm making an essence offering to this land. This creates smooth energy, you know, between, like, me and all beings here. And, um, and, but, but there are also actual animals in the forest that are literally going to eat this. So I actually don't believe in putting chocolate to the forest because that's not good for the animals. So I like to take like a grounded approach. Like I'm not going to offer, I'm just going to offer what feels like totally appropriate, like local honey and grains, you know, and like things that feel, um, and I like to make, uh, like saffron water, um, things like that on occasion, on really special occasions, you know, to, to make offerings, you know, of course, like one's hair is, is always, um, it's, I think it's a traditional offering, but, um, from the Tibetan Buddhist perspective, like this is our, our hair and our nails are, um, are connected with the Dakinis, like the wisdom, um, aspect our like great mind aspect. This, this is like our secret, our secret vital life force energy here. And so to make offering of, of our, our hair and our nails, you know, is literally to make offering of like our bodies, our sacred being to another. So I think that's, um, and song. I love offering songs to my favorite fairy places. So, um, yeah. That, those are some of the ways I like to make offerings. It's become more unconventional um, over the years. <laughs> Spontaneous. Yeah, I I really I really feel that the plants um, feel the most when the offering comes from the inside out. It's like is yeah. that offering coming from that intentional space of love? Yeah, my sense and understanding of what I receive from them in those yeah. experiences is that they're not so particularly concerned with the form that the offering comes in, but rather the energy that is coming through the form of that offering, that that's the most important thing. And so I just love your <laughs> sharing your story with the, with the latte. It's like, I'm sure that as you were making that latte, you were just like, feeling it, you know, just like, ah, this is great. This is going to the forest, you know, it's like, just like, so in it. And of course they felt that. You know, yeah, I it's thought it was like, silly. <laughs> it's so great. I just love it. I love it. Well, Vita, thank you so, so much for joining mm -hmm. us today. Just so powerful. So grateful for you and your work in the world. Thank you. I really, it just feels so good to connect with you. You have such a lightness about you. And clearly this is supported by all of the prayer work and connection that you have been cultivating. I can feel it. And I think we all will. No, oh, thank you. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much, Vita. And, and thank you all for tuning in. And you can connect more with Vita and her work at goldenbowcoaching.com and on Instagram at goldenbowcoaching. And thanks so much for listening and joining us today on the Plant Spirit Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it and please follow to subscribe, leave a review and look forward to seeing you on the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>